So our conversation today is about valuing the sound of your voice. And um, so I'm assuming that all of you are spending time on the phone and it's really important to own and work with the sound of your voice. And Natasha, who's joining us, is a voiceover talent or a voiceover actor, and we'll learn more about that in a few minutes. What I want to start with is the obvious. None of us, including Natasha and myself, like how we sound. None of us do. And there's a reason for that. And it's in terms of owning your, the sound of your voice, it's good to know what the reason is. So when we have conversations and we hear our voices, they do sound very different than how they sound to other people. And that's because when we hear our own voice, we're hearing it in two different ways. So we do hear it through vibrating sound waves that hit our eardrum. And that's the way other people are hearing it. But we also end up hearing it in another way, through vibrations that are set off inside our skull by our vocal cords. So these vibrations get our eardrum vibrating, but they also spread out and end up interacting with our bony skull. And this creates a false sense of a bass tone in our voice. So when we hear our voice recorded, it sounds a lot higher. And I remember um, many years ago, would be the late 80s, when I started um, recording my voice regularly and being so disappointed <laughs> at how high my voice was because I really thought it was a lot lower than it is. But after um, you know several months of listening and recording consistently, I got over it. So um, that's one of the things we want to say. None of us like the sound of our own voice you kind of you have to live with that. If you want to really work with the tone of your voice, you have to get over that and embrace what you have to work with. Um, I want to let everybody know that Travis is here from Chicago. So welcome, Travis. And in sales, I, uh, I'm really glad to have you here. So now that we've got that idea over with, that you're not going to enjoy listening to the sound of your voice, you need to start recording yourself. This is the bottom line if you want to really improve how you work with your tone of voice. So whether you're on the phone or you're on video like we are today or you're in a face-to-face -face meeting, you have to own how you sound and work with it. And recording yourself is the best tool to use. Now back in the day, um, this wasn't easy to do. When I wanted to record myself in the 80s and 90s, I had to get a little attachment for my phone, and to that I had to attach a tape recorder, believe it or not, and record calls. And I did that for myself and my sales team. Um, but today it's easy on our cell phones. It's very easy to record ourselves. We can phone our voicemail, hear our voice that way. Um, so if when we want to have excellent conversations, we have to get comfortable with how we sound. And how can we accomplish that? Well, that's where our special guest comes in from California, Natasha. So Natasha is a voiceover actor or talent. She's based in Los Angeles, California at the moment, but she's lived almost everywhere. No, but she's lived in Vancouver and New York and Grand Cayman. She's been a lot of places and you're viewing her in her home studio. Um, and she does everything from 30 second commercials to film previews. Uh, she can be the voice on the PA system at an international conference. You may even run into her in some corporate voicemail, which is always awesome when that happens to me. 
she does have a degree in radio and broadcast journalism and um, she enjoyed several years as a blues and jazz singer and even performed at the world-renowned New York Jazz uh, Birdland. So that was amazing. Um, Natasha's telling me my video is a little jumpy. It might be the internet, Tash, um, that's causing that. So hopefully, if I get frozen or cut off, thank you, you're still going to get these slides. But um, I may be jumpy. I had a lot of coffee, which we're going <laughs> to talk about. Um, so welcome, Natasha. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about your day as a voiceover talent and how often you are using your voice and maybe even um, the range of your voice that you end up using. It'd be good maybe to even give us a sample of that so people know that they have that kind of a range available. And maybe it's too early in the morning and you could tell me that too. <laughs> well, um, I am so grateful to work from home, like so many people get to do that, but with the studio at home, um, it's very flexible. So I'm in and out of the studio all day and, um, and sometimes at night, but because um, I'm very affected by sleep and exhaustion, I really try to only record, say, after 9 a.m., 9.30 in the morning until if I have to stay up late, let's say 8.30 or 9 p.m., because my voice is pretty low in the morning and then I don't have the um, continuity if I'm recording for someone and they want it uh, pick up or they want a revision then that's not consistent so I try to keep it in there um, funny I do use different ranges of my voice whether it's as hard set I'm not, I'm not I don't want to do it <laughs> whether it's a hard sell a car commercial or a softer compassionate hospital thing but <clears throat> what I've sort of grown into is really um, embracing my authentic voice and that's where I've become most successful and when I say authentic voice it just means I'm not putting anything on so when um, you know when I'm talking like this and I can use just this and it's just really natural and re really easy um, but I also have the need to do smooth smooth announcer things and um, and I need to warm up in the morning Right, that. and it's seven a.m. here. Just FYI, everybody. Yes, I was going to remind everybody it is seven a.m. in California, and I want to thank you again for getting up very early to do this with us. Anything for you, Mary Jane. <laughs> <laughs> so let's um, visit the idea of taking care of your voice, and this statement that you often share with people, which is your voice is your brand. So. What do you mean by when you say that, that your voice is your brand or what is your intent when you're talking about that? Well, as um, solopreneurs, freelancers, small business people, we make a first impression with how we look and how we sound. And it's uh, your voice is the brand of your business because it's um, displaying your professionalism and it's who you are is your brand so you want to come off as professional as possible depending on your your business making sure you're hitting the mark with um portraying what you want to put out want what you want to put out there and, and sometimes with your voice it isn't necessarily what you would ideally like to put out there as your brand so it's really important to be self-aware and listen to yourself and know well what am i sounding like and do i need to shift that at all and so when it comes to taking care of your voice, what are some of the things that you do and or recommend? Um, so I talk a lot about vocal health in my own blog posts because I'm so kind of obsessed with it because I have to be um, every day. So one thing is, is water and, um, and a lot of water. Um, simply to sound more hydrated because you get these mouth clicks which i've heard over the phone or on webinars when people have that kind of thing and it's really disruptive i find <laughs> to me it is um uh, so water helps but you can also be over hydrated and that'll make the mouth clicky sound too so you have to find your own personal balance and one of the things that actually helps with that is green apples if you're over hydrated or dehydrated 
it's only a brief um, remedy, but if you have a green apple with acidity, it, it helps to balance out your mouth uh, sounds. And I also use um, a vocal spray personally because it helps me a lot. Um, I can barely describe it because it, it's it's like a lifesaver to me. It rounds out my voice, but if I'm coughing or if I have a, a bit of a tickly it and I'm in a, a session, it helps me immediately. So it's, it's actually a mix of oils that someone in our industry put together to sell as a thing that's a VO thing, voice um, over thing. But it's a blend of essential oils from doTERRA, which you could probably put together or just so you know what's in it and give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So there's on guard oil blend and then lemon, peppermint, myrrh, oregano, clove, sandalwood, and distilled water. It doesn't taste very good, but um, it's very effective. <laughs> so yeah, those are just a couple of things that I make sure I'm on top of to sound my best along with sleep. And there's lots more for us to talk about, but those are the basics. Well, and yesterday you showed us your straw trick. <laughs> so I, I warm up on just recently, I learned a wonderful warm up from another voice actor. Her name is Shauna Pennington Baird, and she uses a straw. And what she said is that, and actually she didn't create it, it's a, some doctor told her about it, but when you use a straw to warm up your voice instead of humming or scales, singing scales, which I usually did, um, it doesn't put as much pressure on your vocal cords. It, so you do it for five minutes and it gently warms up your voice. And I haven't done it this morning, so I will Oh, great. A little bit. Okay. And you can do scales or singing, so um, I do. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, revving like a car engine. And I do that when I'm making tea and getting some things ready for my studio, and within five minutes, suddenly I have an, a more relaxed voice. Actually, it, it's a you have to find a balance between relaxed and warmed up because if it's too relaxed and you just woke up, it, you know, you have to sort of tighten your vocal cords a little bit. Well, what's interesting um, today, because yesterday we did this at 11 a.m. your time. So I know that it's very early in the morning there. And just those two things you did on the straw, I could hear the difference in your voice. So you still had some of that early morning sound, that sleep sound in your voice. And just that little bit with the straw made a difference. So I'm a convert now. I'm gonna go and find myself a straw for sure. Um, some of the other things that we can talk about are um, dehydration, hydration, if the night before you've been out yelling at a hockey game, I'll use a hockey game as an example, um, that can really impact your voice the next day. And exhaustion can really impact your voice. Um, I see that Natasha is frozen, so I'm gonna keep going. Oh, oh there, there she's back. Are. Great, thank you. Um, I was just talking about that second point there about maybe being out at night and yelling at a hockey game or um, alcohol dehydrates us and it can really change the sound of our voice. So if you've been out with friends and had, you know, not necessarily a lot of drinks, but a few drinks, know that that's going to impact your voice the next day. And the clicks are interesting. Um, so we... If we're dehydrated, we must be moving our mouth to hydrate it while we talk. And if we're overhydrated, we must be swallowing. Is that kind of how that works? Um, hmm. I'm not sure. It's funny because you froze and I didn't and I kept talking and I guess you kept talking and so Oh, well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, voice clicks, you know, mouth sounds. There's not, there's all kinds of different things. So swallowing whatever but i think just making sure you have water as or um, herbal tea as opposed to coffee which is really dehydrating or soda which is really sweet and um to paint you have to also um try it on your own because different things work for different people i find i'll drink a certain tea and i it's quite acidic and i'll i'll be choked up so it's a matter of personal preference 
Okay. And that coffee thing is definite that I learned that early on, not that I've given up coffee, but um, I recorded myself without coffee and I recorded myself with coffee and definitely my speed and my timing was much faster and a little edgy, actually a little stressed. So, um, in terms of vocal speed, one of the things you shared with me, Tash, is to, you know, take several deep breaths before you get on a call or before you start a series of calls, just so you can regulate your own inner meter. Um, having clear, articulate voice is how we inspire conversation, or in Natasha's case, record a great commercial. Yes, and we're going to talk about that in vocal delivery as we... Yeah. Yeah. And if you have a cold, um, say so right at the beginning of the call. And it's like, you know, what I say about background noise and all kinds of things. It'll be a distraction if you don't say it. And Tush, you have a lot of experience with a variety of things to deal with having a cold and still being able to use your voice. Absolutely. On the phone, you can, you, you tell them, you announce it so that it's not the elephant in the room. As a voice actor, I, I'm not really allowed to have a cold. So I have, I do a lot of different things. Like I drink gin, fresh ginger tea with honey and lemon, but I always have things at my command in my studio. So my vocal throat spray and, and as you see on the list, lozenges and tissues and chapstick and different things. So um, warm hot chocolate works for me, but sugar is uh, allegedly um, irritates one's throat. And, and I know it does. So you want to find lozenges that are actually sugar free because the sugar is not a good idea. Um, but I always have them at my command. So it's good to have it around, around at your desk so that you don't have a coughing fit. Yeah. And I have in my career certainly had to hang up the phone because I lost my voice. So um, until you sort of have a cold and you're fighting with that, you don't realize how much you're using, how much energy you're putting in and using those vocal cords. And when you have a cold, it's so easy to be having a great conversation and strain that vocal cord all of a sudden and start coughing or, um, so having water nearby is always, always important. And, um, acknowledging that you have the cold. So there's two more areas we want to talk about in the seven, 13 minutes we have left. And one is the tone of your voice. And Natasha, you shared with me this phrase, I don't think I was familiar with at all, voice print. So can you tell us a bit about that? Sure. My coach, uh, one of my coaches, Mark Cashman, uses the term voice print and that is your authentic sound. So it's when, when you are relaxed and um, some people in voiceover say when you're talking on the phone to your friend, that's your natural voice. Of course, we do different things if it, depending on who we're talking to, like if we're talking to our mother or someone that upsets us or stresses us out or makes us sad, um, that affects your voice print, but your voice print is your natural sound. And that's why any of us would get hired uh, as a voice actor because we have something unique that someone else doesn't have. Right. And certainly in our work, no matter what our work is, whether it's research or sales, when we want to create a relationship with someone, even if in terms of a 15 minute phone call, we want to be our authentic self. People can tell that over the phone and it's what allows them to build relationship with us and share more with us, quite frankly. So one of the ways we identify our voice print goes back to how we started this webinar again. You really have to record your voice and get to know it. Um, Tash, when you started working with your voice, um, you had that same experience that you didn't like the sound of your voice? For sure. My whole life, I didn't like the sound of voice. Even today, I think, why are they hiring me? So I have to let go of whatever my natural sound is. And a lot, you know, everyone that knows me personally is, that doesn't sound like you. That doesn't sound like you. 
Um, but I am connecting my voice over voice, as I, I demonstrated before, with a more natural thing so that hopefully it will all sound like me and people will know. Because it's, I don't want to put on voice. I want it to be authentically me. And that's what you get hired more for if it's authentically you. But a great point that you have to listen to yourself because you think it's authentically you. And then you listen back and you think, boy, did I sound nervous. Boy, did I sound um, more high pitched than I thought because I'm, I'm, I had too much coffee or I didn't. I'm just nervous on the phone. You really want to identify that because you get, the listener can hear it. Yeah, absolutely. So everybody that's on the call, if you've got any questions or a comment, please don't hesitate to put it into chat. We're uh, very open to stopping the conversation and addressing any questions or comments you have. That's part of what makes this um, useful for everybody and we want to make sure it's useful. So the last section that we want to spend time on was vocal delivery. And this is where the magic happens. Once you uh, take care of your voice and you own how you sound, that voice print that Natasha has shared with you, then you get to work with your voice and create um, relationship, create conversation, um, emphasize points on the phone, create excitement. All of those things will be easier for you um, when you understand also vocal delivery. So Tash, you talk about vocal delivery first rather than my taking over here. Sure. Uh, well, there's different things we can do to sound more natural, for example. So uh, very important in my business, and I would think in yours as well, is to sound natural and conversational. So if you're reading a script, for example, or you have a script nearby to use as a support for yourself, you do not want to sound like you're reading the script. You want it to be conversational. So one of the tips that I use for myself is pacing. Musicality is really important in delivering um, conversation or delivering a script. And so whether it's tempo or um, uh, melody, it's all musical. So one of the quick tricks I have is speed. Um, I'm looking at the slide deck right now and I'll read one of the sentences and I'll show you what I mean. So we'll say, we all have a musicality in our voices. So I started out quick and I slowed down. So I continue so you can see what I mean. We all have a musicality in our voices. And when we hear our own music and incorporate it into our conversations. So you can hear there's a bit of a pace difference. And there's something more natural about that. Because if you're reading, it's really obvious with this sort of um, even tempo thing. You don't want an even tempo. You want it to be varied. And then the other thing we're looking at is musicality. So um, Mary Jane and I kind of giggle about um, upspeak uh, because it, it's when you sound like you have a question mark at the end of a sentence. It's not supposed to have a question mark. It indicates that you're unsure or nervous. A really good example of this though is when I'm at home and I say, Alexa, I'm speaking with certainty, Alexa. But when my husband does it, he goes, Alexa? And I always giggle because he's doing upspeak. And I think, why is he doing that? But it's, he doesn't have an ear to hear the difference probably. So, and then he'll say, um, um, <laughs> night, so night sounds, can you play night sound? And I mean, he's asking her questions, but he's always has this, uh-huh. And <laughs> you want to sound definitive. And so when you come down, musically you sound more definitive and that's really important to come across conf with confidence absolutely and when um your husband is talking to alexa is there a bigger pause in her response because he's made it a question <laughs> he responds the same no matter what so it's all about me and my judgment of how he's delivering it the important thing to recognize about our vocal delivery is it's within our control Right? So if you're a fast talker, you can slow down. Now, it takes practice. I've worked with a lot of fast talkers. And that can, you can be a fast talker because of your culture. I've worked with people that come from uh, Cape Breton, uh, very French communities, and they tend to talk very, very quickly. And it's hard to turn that around, but you can do it with practice. And if you tend to speak in a monotone, you can learn how to emphasize 
certain words and you can learn to let go of up speak if that's what you're doing what i find interesting about vocal delivery um i think i've always instinctively understood it on the phone but a few years ago i had to give a speech and it was a speech i had to memorize and so i was really focused on getting the words right and natasha coached me on that and uh, pointed out that i wasn't emphasizing certain words so the story i was telling which was part of the speech wasn't coming across very well uh, they it just sounded a little boring and dull um, so knowing that the emphasis on certain words is very important to your audience and your ability to uh, get across certain important information but also to encourage them to communicate with you to get to that point of communication well and the emphasis and the the tone of voice, literally the melody of your voice. If you sound confident, you will inspire confidence in the listener. I've really experienced that on the phone. If I sound nervous, like there's nothing happening in terms of a dynamic in the phone call, but if I sound confident, the other person feels confident. Yes, right, that's right, that's very right. So how do we all work with our vocal delivery? We're going to come back again to the same point at the beginning, which was we have to listen to our voice. So know, again, that when you start listening to recordings, you're going to be uncomfortable. I, we can't take that away from you. We lived through it. Um, and that's okay just say all right i'm going to be uncomfortable with the sound of my voice but it's my voice and i need to own it you had some great examples yesterday of how to record your voice or how, you know in really simple ways remember leaving yeah. a voicemail for yourself yeah. or recording on your cell phone i thought that was a great great idea it's very simple yeah and there's there's several apps out there of uh, that you can have on your cell phone so that your cell phone records um, your calls. Now, when I say that, there's some regional differences here. So in Canada, um, you can record a phone call between two people as long as one person knows the call's being recorded. And you don't have to tell everybody. Once a third person can jump on the call, everybody has to know the call is being recorded. So that's Canadian law. It's very different in the U.S., and every state in the U.S. has a different law about what can and cannot be recorded. Hmm. And that goes back to Watergate. So um, for any of my guests from the U.S., you would want to check uh, with a, you know, a lawyer, basically, about what the guidelines are for where you're making calls, because they're different in every state. But... Um, there's a platform I use called Recordia Pro, which records uh, calls of uh, my staff that are on the phone for me, and I can jump online and listen to them, and, and it's very, very helpful, and they can listen to them too. So you can have someone else listen to your calls, someone you trust, and you can get their feedback. Um, thanks, Linda. Um, it don't just rely on yourself to be the listener uh, get someone else to listen as well if you're making your living with your voice get feedback as i say um, natasha's help with that speech i never would have caught that myself not a chance and um the friend that told me that coffee was not a good idea never would have figured that one out on my own so even this uh, this wonderful um, straw trick you've given us, I'm going to go for it because I need this voice to be its best throughout every day. So that's great. So with one minute left, I'm going to walk us through the fact that if you've got questions or comments, please put them into chat. We're going to hang out until we answer them all. We, when we were putting this together, we thought it might be three webinars. We weren't sure and we're welcome, uh, or we're, we would welcome making three webinars. So if you're interested in our dividing this up into the three different topics in more depth, 
just put yes to three in chat and we'll take that under advisement for sure. And also want to let you know that you're going to be receiving and may have already received today's slide deck, early bird notice of discounts for the phone lady, um, tips, stories. If you enjoyed this and you're on the phone full time, my course Mastering Your Business Communication Skills is uh, awesome, so you'll enjoy that as well. And uh, our February webinar is about how to increase lead generation conversions by picking up the phone. Um, so there's a lot of companies putting a lot of money into Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, but how do you make those lead gens into sales or hot prospects? So that's what we'll be looking at in February. So Natasha, I don't see any questions at the moment in chat. Um, you are available to people if they want to have you listen to their calls. Sure, I love uh, presentation coaching. I love helping people with that. It's just something that um, I'm nerdy about hearing and giving feedback about the nuances. So I, I'm happy to to coach people on that if they okay. They're interested. And Natasha is easy to find at natashamarchevka.com. And Bettina, what is the straw trick again? Do you mind telling us a bit more about it and also giving us a demo? So when you use a straw to warm up, I'm looking at the chat as though she's sitting there. When we use the straw to warm up, instead of singing or humming, you put less pressure on your vocal cords. And so it's a really gentle way to warm up and something that someone taught me that will help with the long, you know, keeping your voice healthy for the long term. So um, you just hum into it or sing into it. And I do that for five minutes um, before when I'm setting up, making my tea, what have you. And all of a sudden, um, I have a little bit of a clear, not a little bit, I have a significantly warmed up voice and uh, it's, it's super helpful. It's also helpful to warm down or is that a word you use, warm down? So when I have um, a session or something that's really powerful, a hard sell, I will do this again because it, it relaxes. And so that's gentle um, for your vocal health as well. Wonderful. Yeah. So Nicole has shared that she's also a singer and an entrepreneur. So she's found this really helpful. And Linda is saying that she can attest to your coaching skills. So yes, I've fantastic. coached Linda as well. <laughs> so I've taken us over time. And uh, if there's questions, we'll stay here. Not a problem at all if anybody has questions. But otherwise, of course, feel free to, uh, to sign off. We're, we're just going to hang out for a few more minutes or a minute um, to see if there's any questions. But otherwise, thanks everybody for being here. I hope I see okay. you in February if the topics of value. And uh, Natasha's at natashamarchevka.com. Yeah. And uh, I am thephonelady.com. So easy to find if you're more comfortable uh, emailing us your questions or comments. And you have an email that should already be in your inbox. Um, with a discount for my course if you got a lot thank you natasha for putting that link in there well um, did it just to the panelists at best to give it to everybody attendees <laughs> yeah everybody you're very welcome we really enjoy doing these webinars question what do you suggest for people with strong regional accents for example i have a strong midwestern accent well and patricia Nice to see you here. Um, a couple of things. It goes back to the idea of music. So our voices are musical, whether we know that or not. Um, and listening to someone's voice is a musical experience. It's not the same as listening to a singer, but it is about music. And so when you, d does your accent prevent other people from understanding you if so at the beginning of a call you might say I realize you may not be familiar with my accent let me know if you ever need me to repeat something or if you need me to slow down but a midwestern accent to me wouldn't necessarily cause that issue um, so you might say something in an offhanded way and just say, uh, you know, 
hope you're enjoying my Midwestern accent. Just so not necessarily, don't apologize for it in any way, but you can point it out in a sort of fun way if it's not causing communication problems for you. But if you find that it's causing communication problems, then say that at the beginning. Natasha, what are your thoughts there? Um, <laughs> <laughs> the same as you. Um, first of all, listening back to your voice in the calls or just listening to your voice <clears throat> and having someone else let you know. Um, Midwestern is pretty understandable for regular English. There's just pronunciations of words that are different. If you wanted to get rid of your accent, there are coaches that help you with that. But I really, you know, it's authentic. If it's authentically you, it sounds like you and it's clear. There's nothing wrong with an accent. I know, Mary Jane, you've had far more experience with this th than I have over the phone listening to people and, and being very tactful about it. And those were awesome examples. Um, but other than that, it's what we've talked about in the webinar, and that is making sure that you can be understood. And yeah, and everybody has an accent, right? Depending on where you're calling in the world, um, everybody has an accent. So I moved out here to Atlanta, Canada 22 years ago, and um, it was about a year when my friends in Ontario would say, you've got the accent. <laughs> So instead of car, I now say car. Um, so there are, we start picking up accents when we're in a new culture and everybody has an accent. So again, if your accent isn't causing communication problems, say it in an offhanded friendly way somewhere to make you feel comfortable, that's fine. Um, and to let them know you know you have an accent, but they do too. So. Um, Josephine, I sing in a choir and sometimes feel like I develop a film over my voice despite warming up. I feel like I need to cough but really can't during a song. Any tips? That's over to you, Natasha, for sure. <laughs> um, well, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but I think that it's... Um, you need more warming up. And I think there's warming up and then there's warming up physically. So um, you can do like a downward dog yoga wise or just bending over forward. One of my singing coaches, um, her vocal warm ups were moving your arms up and down and bending your knees and really uh, putting the physical into it because somehow that really helps a lot more than just a, a in fact, I found the straw works a lot more than um, singing scales. And the other thing is, if there's, and I've been, because I've been facing this lately, if there's a bit of um, allergies, and it's just sort of sitting there, you do, and you, it's really concerning you, then you need to take medication so that it's not an issue. And that takes a while to loosen up and stuff. But I really recommend the physicality that helps um, doing the sunrise salutations, which um, if anyone doesn't know, it's just a big up and a down and then up and a down and this sort of warming and up thing that we do in yoga. But the up and down movement seems to really loosen up the voice for lack of a better. Well, everything's connected. And um, for most of my career, I walked everywhere. I didn't have a driver's license. And so by the time I got to the office, my voice was warmed up. And then I went and had to get a driver's license here in Atlanta, Canada. And I've noticed the difference if I get on the phone right away without doing something physical. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I do start the day with stretching and movement, even for, you know, five or 10 minutes to make sure that my voice and my body are connected. I think it's that connection that you want to, to create as part of your warm up. 